G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Well, it's Wednesday evening here in Australia, so about sort of 8 o'clock at night. And as we can see in this Bitcoin chart here, I'll just open this up a little bit, sorry, the other way. Bitcoin is just ranging. It's been, you know, sort of stuck between 17,000 and sort of 19,500 for quite some time. It did kind of, you know, bridge over and get up to that sort of, you know, nearly $20,000 mark, but it's just rolled over every single time. Now we can see I had the trend line in here. It was following this. It broke above it, peaked here, dropped down a little bit, and now it's broken above it again, but it is still just kind of you know, holding at that $19,500 level and we're all waiting to see what's going to happen. Look, the volume is a little bit low, so I guess that makes me wonder if this is going to be the moment where it'll do it. But Bitcoin being Bitcoin, that's probably why it will do it, just because everyone's thinking, no, it won't do it now, the volume's low, uh, and so it will roll over and it'll probably skyrocket up to, you know, <laughs> some other ridiculous price but look i could be wrong we'll have to wait and see but it really has you know found a lot of resistance at the nineteen thousand five hundred dollar level but look as soon as it drops down into that kind of you know seventeen thousand dollar range you know really even eighteen thousand dollars it just gets bought up as we can see dips down goes straight back up straight back up straight back up it, you know it just keeps getting bought up it really hasn't dipped you know below eighteen thousand dollars for a while it you know kind of tipped it just here and wicked below but it just gets bought up oh so quick and particularly when it was uh getting bought up you know uh when it was getting down to the $17,000 level. So we're just waiting to see what will happen. And look, I honestly don't know. We'll just have to wait and see. I think we've been playing around here. There is a possibility that we have a, you know, a reasonable correction down to 17000 But there's no guarantees on that. I think it's almost equally as possible that we jump straight up to around about 25000 maybe twenty four and a bit thousand. Uh, and then we may see a 40% correction from 25,000, which takes us down to like sort of 14,800, 14,900. That would not surprise me. Now, I'm not saying that's what will happen. We could go to, you know, 25 and play around for a while and then go to 35, have a 20, uh, sorry, 30, 40% retracement and end up back around here, around the kind of the twenty eighteen thousand dollars mark. Just, you know, I really can't tell at the moment and I wish I could because I'd be able to you know play the market a lot better at the moment I just don't know we could range here sideways for quite some time it could be like an accumulation period where there's every chance that uh, altcoins generally do well because that's when they do the best is when Bitcoin is sort of ranging sideways so you know we'll all keep our eyes peeled and wait and see what happens uh let me know let me know down in the comments below what you think what's your thoughts you know are we going to range sideways for a while do you think we're finally going to break above twenty thousand and stay above for at least a while or do you think we're going to dump before we even get there and again maybe come back down and test seventeen thousand you know maybe even fourteen thousand i think that's unlikely at the moment i think it's possible we get to sort of twenty five thousand have a 40% retracement and come back down towards uh, 14, more sort of 15,000. But even then, there's no guarantees that will happen. All right, let's go over and have a look. We'll have to refresh this. So 573 billion. This has been here for a while. Let's see what's happening. Still 573 billion. All right, there we go. Gas uh, coming down a little bit up. was up around sort of 50, 60. So coming down, which is good. BTC dominance is growing at the moment. So 62.9%. So it's, you know, getting close to that 63% and then maybe even back to the 65% and higher. And, you know, that makes me think that maybe people are taking some profit from the altcoins that have done reasonably well of late and they're putting it into Bitcoin. And that is what's going to finally push it over that $20,000 mark. Again, I, I don't know that for a fact. I'm just basing that on gut feeling and what I've seen before. And again, we've had altcoins that have done amazing uh, over the last few days and that. Uh, and, you know, some have been really hammered at times as well. But I think the profits from some of those have definitely been put into Bitcoin uh, and it may push higher. We'll just have to wait and see. All right. What about big movers? What's been the big movers in the last 24 hours? All right, Bancorp Network. So they've done really well. They've pumped up 90% in the last week. So well done to them. Uh, Uma, 
Zilliker, well done. Elrond uh, has been doing quite well. Uh, again, you know, when you see these pumps like this, consider taking profits. That's all I'm going to say. It's just consider, unless you're a long-term hodler. If you're a long-term hodler, then it doesn't matter. You know, you're going to hold for your 12 months, so it's tax-free or whatever it is that you're going to do. Uh, but if you're sort of a trader and things like that, and swing trading and all the rest of it, you know, if I saw something like that in seven days, I would definitely be taking some profit. I'm not saying I'd sell everything, but I'd probably be taking some profit uh, and looking for the next kind of trade. But anyway, I'm not really a trader, though. I do a bit of swing trading. You know, sometimes it pays off really well for me, and other times it really wrecks me. <laughs> and I think it probably wrecks me uh, more than it not completely wrecks, because I never do anything like that. But I think it... Uh, doesn't work for me more than it works for me, hence why I'm more of an investor uh, than a trader. All right, what about losses? Has anyone really been hurting over 24 hours? No, not too bad. That's actually not too bad at all. So synthetics down, uh, but again, up 9.4% over seven days. These are all just single digit losses and generally sort of low single digit losses. Anything under 5%, you know, we can consider low and look six to sort of 7% uh, is not really that bad. And XRP, again, I did say I'd be looking to buy some more between sort of 40 cents and 45 cents. I think it is possible it goes into the 30s, but I would be surprised if it sort of goes below 35 cents. I don't even think it'll go that low. But look, uh, again, that's more a guess. Uh, a lot of people, I think, bought their XRP so they could get their free uh, Spark tokens and things like that. Uh, and it's pretty hard to say that that's not what has happened considering the move uh, that has been made so yeah single digit losses not too bad and it's to be expected you know things can't pump uh, for days and weeks on end and then not have any kind of retracement so anyway we'll see all right i did find an interesting article over here so compound compound finance founder says that cfi will embrace DeFi. Uh, I think this is true. I, I think CFI won't have a choice. So that's centralized finance, like your banks and all the rest of it. They will have to embrace DeFi because otherwise they'll get left behind. They just can't match what's happening in the DeFi market at the moment. So they will be uh, piggybacking uh, on this for sure. Speaking at a DeFi summit, Compound Finance founder Robert Leshner is confident that CFI will embrace DeFi. Compound Finance founder Robert Leshner says that CFI will inevitably embrace DeFi and there are signs it is already occurring. Speaking at the Re uh, Redefine Tomorrow Global DeFi and Blockchain Virtual Summit in Bangkok, Thailand today, Leshner aired his views on CFI DeFi integration, the issues with Ethereum and the advantages of decentralized governance. Host uh, Mukaya Panich, Chief Venture Venturer, uh, yeah, venture and investment officer of event sponsor SBC 10X, uh, linked to Siam Commercial Bank, asked Leshner about DeFi's integration with traditional and centralized finance. He commented that lines will blur and, de and centralized finance and business will start to use DeFi to power the back end in order to improve user experience. Absolutely, they will. Uh, DeFi at the moment, you know, as long as you you know, understand that if it's too good to be true, it is. Uh, and there's some wild sort of things out there that are saying 20%, 30%, 40% APIs and all the rest of it. That's just unsustainable. That cannot last. But banks at the moment, most of them around the world are in near negative interest. And there are plenty of, you know, reputable crypto sort of firms that have positive interest. You know, anywhere from sort of, you know, 2 3%, which is still better than most of the banks, up to around 8 to 12% on some of them. So, yeah, the banks will have no choice. They will have to go to DeFi uh, to become profitable again and to be able to offer people money because it's just not working in the centralised finance form at the moment. Uh, you put money in a bank, they're going to tax you for it. All right, China prediction. When Beijing enters global race to secure Bitcoin, price could spike. I don't think could. I think it will on it. I think it'll go up quite hard. Uh, China is the second biggest uh, economy in the world, and if they decide to really get into something, uh, then the price is certainly going to move. China's state-run media, CCTV, has published Bitcoin's outshining of gold, has published yeah, Bitcoin's outshining of gold, leading an expert to comment on what would happen if Beijing were to invest heavily in the cryptocurrency. 
The piece on Bitcoin on China's main public broadcast channel claimed it could be a safer store of value than gold. The news piece on, is now feeding speculation that the world's second biggest economy could be planning to significantly invest in the digital currency. Chinese state-run media giant CCTV forecasts that increased Bitcoin investment could apply downward pressure on gold. Excuse me. In 2017, Beijing took a hardline approach cryptocurrencies, but the recent interest from CCTV has raised suggestions that China's approach to Bitcoin may be thawing. Uh, every country is going to get on board. It won't matter whether they really like it or not. It'll just be the gains that are coming from it. The adoption, they will have no choice but to get on board rather than get left behind and be the last one to the table and miss out on you know, all the crazy gains that are basically in the cryptocurrency space. They may not love it, uh, and they probably despised it not long ago, but they will eventually get on board. And considering they're one of the biggest Bitcoin miners uh, in the world, why wouldn't they? And it just makes sense for them to get on board. I'm sure they'll be able to buy it very cheap and uh, control you know, the mining fairly well over there, considering a lot of it's based in their country. Not as much as what people think. You know, the mining pools originate uh, in China, but there's, you know, they've got people in other parts of the world uh, mining uh, Bitcoin just into their pool. So it's not quite as big as what is made out at times. All right. No need to convince shareholders micro strategies investors already sold on Bitcoin, says an says analyst. All right, investment banker Ellie Frost has put out a Twitter thread showing that four of MicroStrategy's top 10 shareholders had already been bullish on Bitcoin before Michael Saylor's company's big dive into the digital asset. According to Frost, MicroStrategy did not have much convincing to do as top shareholders BlackRock, Massive, uh, Russell Investment, Renaissance Tech and Citron Fund already had documented interest in Bitcoin. Saylor has stated that it only took about six months to get investors' approval for moving $250 million into Bitcoin, a process Frost argues should uh, take about a year at minimum. In a final analysis, the tech investment banker observed, they were already open to it. The fast timeline implies others were also curious. They don't want to miss the boat, and the fact that Bitcoin has survived 12 years shows it's not a fad. Completely agree with that. Completely agree with that. Uh, no doubt about it. You know, fads don't last that long. Uh, they come and go fairly quickly. And again, BlackRock, massive investment company. You know, probably the biggest one out there. Uh, and they were, you know, easily swayed uh, to invest. And again, that's more what they're likely to do: invest in companies that are investing in Bitcoin rather than investing in Bitcoin themselves. But look, in saying that, I'm pretty sure uh, they're invested with Grayscale. I could be wrong, but I'll have to look into that. But I think they are. And I think that's how most of the big businesses, you know, they can't physically buy Bitcoin themselves really a lot of the times. There's rules and regulations. Uh, I'm not sure how MicroStrategy got around it, but a majority of them, they have to go through things like uh, Grayscale and that to keep custody of it for them. And they pay a premium for that. So, yeah. Doesn't surprise me at all that uh, they were quick to get on board. Uh, you know, the, they would have had people looking at this a long time ago. And again, maybe they, you know, places like BlackRock and that have bought Bitcoin uh, and we just don't know about it. But again, they're more likely to buy businesses that are involved with Bitcoin and take the profits that way than investing in the actual asset themselves. But hey, who knows? All right, so DeFi. On Bit, uh, DeFi on Bitcoin gets a boost as uh, Sovereign launches on RSK sidechain. So I didn't even know they really had sidechains going for Bitcoin that had DeFi, but I think this is the second project, so uh, very interesting. A new project built on Bitcoin's sidechain RSK is gunning to advance decentralized finance on Bitcoin's ecosystem. Sovereign, a self-built decentralized platform for trading and lending Bitcoin, launched today with 2.1 million at its back, a symbolic number representing Bitcoin's total supply. Crypto venture capital firm Green, Greenfeld One led the funding round, which also saw contributions um, from Collider Ventures and Monday Capital. A two-in-one decentralized exchange and derivatives market, Sovereign will offer traders borrowing and lending services in Bitcoin, USDT, and RSK's dollar on chain or DOC stablecoin. 
They can also long or short Bitcoin on the platform with up to five times leverage. So Bitcoin finally has its uh, side chains and uh, is getting, you know, DeFi on the chain itself. And so that's really good. But here's what I find a little bit disappointing. Cloning yet another DeFi product, Sovereign plans to launch a governance token which mimics Compound Finance's, Compound Finance's model uh, in Q1 of 2020 with its uh, SOV token sale. So again, it would have been nice if they had have come up with something new and not just copied what has already been done. But look, that's generally the way it goes. If there's a good idea, someone is bound to copy it. And look, sometimes the copies are better than uh, the originals, so we'll just have to wait and see. But it would have been nice if they had have just simply come up with something brand new uh, rather than copy, you know, the same old, same old. But anyway, what can you do? Good to know that... Uh, you know, Bitcoin's blockchain itself uh, is developing. It's got those side chains going. It's going to need side chains to be scalable, much the same as Ethereum. And look, in all fairness, I really hope Bitcoin moves to a proof of stake uh, in the future and moves away from uh, proof of work. I, I think that's a. Uh, it, it's not. It's not the best way anymore. It just uses up too much power, and that power is just going to continue to climb and climb and climb. Uh, and yeah. You know, I don't know what the chances are of Bitcoin ever moving to proof of stake, but I really do think that would be a much better way to go for it in the future. But look, Bitcoin's not broken, so that old saying, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, uh, probably stands. But again, it'll be something that Bitcoin's going to have to uh, confront at some stage in the future is the rising uh, price of electricity and how much power it uses uh, to power that network. And it will only continue to grow. That's just the way it works. All right. If you can't probably tell uh, from my sort of block nose and my croaky voice and all the rest of it, uh, feeling a little bit run down, but I didn't want to let anyone down and not put a video out if I could. There are occasions where I simply can't because uh, I just have too much going on, uh, work-wise, family-wise and all the rest of it. But, you know, being a little bit under the weather isn't going to stop me. All right, stay safe, be kind to one another, hit that like and subscribe button. Hopefully you're still on that game train and I'll see you next time.